So the other day I was bending some chromoly in my Rogue Fab Model 600 with mandrel attachment, and a lot of people were asking me what number I was using for spring back. And then they seemed a little surprised and I said, well, this is not a universal number, I calculated it. And they said, well, how do you do that? Well, here's the video, it's actually really easy. A spring back is a measurement taken to determine the amount of elasticity a metal has once it reaches a point of deformation. In other words, most metals when physically deformed will want to return to their original shape, but can't always do it. The difference between the angle we achieved, the net angle, and the angle we bent to on the dial, the target angle, is the amount that that material will spring back to. Now, as I mentioned before, this number is not universal. In other words, you don't go online asking other people what angle they got so you can do the same. There are many things that influence the amount of elasticity in a particular metal which include the material composition itself, the yield strength of it, grain structure, the machines that people are using which may not be the same as yours, and more. So if you have a bender, you have the answer. Now I'm going to run two different types of material through here so you can actually see the difference, but the process is exactly the same. The first one I have is inch and three quarter 083 wall chromoly. This has to be mandrel bent, it's totally loaded up, mandrel's in there, we're good to go. The second one we're going to do after we rip that one out is the inch and three quarter 120 wall uh, ERW. This is just your average cheap tube, right? So we're going to bend both of those up, take a measure of both of them and see where they land at. Now both of these are going to run to 45 degrees. It doesn't necessarily matter what angle you want to run it at, you just got to pick a number. So these ones we're both going to set to 45 degrees exactly on the nose. As soon as it hits 45, we're going to stop it, pull it out as is, and take a measurement out of each one. Both tubes are going to run exactly this way. So I brought this over. Brought this over to a table here so it's nice, flat, even, you can actually see it. Now, if we were to take both of these, both of them, remember we had the target angle where we bent to on the Rogue, uh, that it was exactly 45 degrees, or as exact as we can get it with an analog dial, but both of them landed at 45 degrees, and if I take the ERW and stick it on top of the chromoly here and actually line them up, we can actually see that the ERW bent more than the chromoly, even though we hit them both at 45 degrees, pretty much on the nose, or as far as I can get it, the chromoly having a higher yield strength and a higher percentage of elasticity bounced back or sprung back which is the spring back calculation that we need to have. It popped itself back towards straight or wanted to flatten itself back out automatically to a different degree. The ERW, it may have been really close to that 45 degrees, but I know that ERW has a, uh, a, a pretty close ratio. It still has some spring back. Now, materials like ERW, chromoly, DOM, different wall thicknesses, different material compositions, all of that, you have to have a measurement for each one of them when you go to bend them. You can't just take a unit universal number and just say that that's good. So in other words, if I was to take this chromoly at whatever measurement it comes out to for its spring back allowance um, and plug it into the ERW, then the ERW is definitely going to go over our target angle. The net angle is going to go over the target angle. So we want to make sure that we measure every single one of these. Now to measure them, we're going to use a digital protractor. You can use an analog protractor, but the digital one gives you more precise readouts. Uh, this is available on Amazon. I got a link in the description. If you want to be totally cool and support us by clicking on that link and buying one, then cool. Uh, I appreciate it, I really do. But uh, these are available in different lengths. Most time you'll see them in like seven inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, 20 some odd inch, whatever the case is. This one has a graduated scale of 18 inches on the ruler, plus it has the metric side. I kind of use that to cheat sometimes when I need to do quick calculations in uh, metric and, uh, and imperial. But nevertheless, uh, have them all, buy them all. It's just, you know, these are things that you, you should probably want to have in your toolbox, especially if you're going into chassis fabrication and stuff like that. So step number one is we're going to zero it. Put it on a nice flat surface and hit the zero button. So as soon as it actually reads that correctly, then we're good to go. Now I want to place it up against the leg of one side and the leg of the other side. It'll take a little bit of fine adjustment just to get it just right. And where both of them are flat on the legs. We're not worried about the apex or anything else like that. We're just flat on the legs. This one comes out to 138 degrees on the nose. No decimals, literally 138 degrees. That's kind of rare. Now that's a supplemental angle or we have to figure out what the supplemental angle is. So we bent it to 45 degrees, that measures that to 138. So a supplemental angle is the uh, difference between one angle and the other in 180 degrees basically. So if you take 180, subtract 138 degrees, you have 42 degrees of a net angle. So we bent it to 45 on the dial and we got 42 as a net result. 
So the difference or the spring back angle is three degrees. If we want to achieve a 45 degree angle on chromoly at this inch and three quarter 083 wall, if we wanted to achieve that on our bender at 45 degrees, we would have to bend to 48 degrees. So when it springs back, it'll land on 45. Now for the ERW, let's see where this one lands at. Again, flat on the legs, not worried about the apex or anything else like that. This one comes out to 135.5. So if we actually do the math on that one, we have a grand total of a difference of half a degree. Half, exactly half. <laughs> so if I wanted to bend inch and three quarter 120 ERW in my Rogue Fab bender to get 45 degrees, I need to bend it to 45 and a half degrees. That's what it calculates too, because there's a half a degree of spring back angle on that bend. So just a bit of a recap here, in case I went a little bit too fast and none of that made any sense. Take whatever material you're bending and chuck it up into your bender. Select a target angle. In this case, I went to 45 degrees. You can pick whatever angle you want. Well, theoretically 10 degrees or more. And you don't really want to go much more than about 90 or so because it's very difficult to measure. But select whatever number it is that you want or whatever target angle. Bend it to exactly that target angle in your bender. In this case, I bent it to exactly 45 degrees. Then measure the actual angle or the net angle you achieved after you bent it. The difference between the net angle and the target angle is your spring back. Take the spring back amount or that difference and add it to your target angle. This will make sure that it springs back to the exact same place every single time. And if I didn't mention it or make enough sense out of it, do this with every single material you intend to bend. And do not, under any circumstances, treat this as a universal number that you can just copy from somebody else because you have the answer if you have the bender. And if you didn't have the bender, then you'll have to wait until you do get the bender and all the rest of that good stuff. So thanks for watching. If you got any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. I'll see you guys in the next round.